Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline. For anyone new out there, welcome to my channel. Now today's video is all about flying with a little one. So whether your baby is a newborn, an infant, a toddler, um, I'm going to be sharing my top tips and all the information that I have learnt um, and I'm going to be passing it on to you. Now for anyone that doesn't know, I took Qasim on our first family holiday when he was five months. We then went to Amra, he was one year and a half and then we did actually plan to go to Dubai um, this April so he would have been two and a half so it would have been our third time travelling out and believe it or not this time round I was like super excited, I wasn't anxious at all about the whole plane situation um, because I found like before our first family holiday when he was five months to Egypt which was about five six hours I was just terrified. I was really scared about the whole plane situation. Um, and no matter how much research I did, I was just still really scared about it. Going on a family holiday with your little one is the right thing to do. Uh, we have created some amazing memories and I don't regret going away at all. And I try and encourage other people, like if you can, do it. It's, it's, you know, it's such a wonderful time um, for the family. Um, and so yeah, Let's get into my top tips on flying with a really young child. Right guys, so I've got a bunch of notes here that I'm going to share with you. So feel free to grab a notepad or if you're not watching on your phone or you're watching on the TV, get your phone out and get ready to make some notes. Okay, so initially I did think about making two videos, making a video for travelling with a newborn or an infant and then traveling with like a older child like a toddler um but then i thought no i'm just gonna put it all in one and you never know there might be someone out there that is traveling with an infant and a toddler so having just one video where all the information is there it might be useful um, now there's not that much change uh but there are a few things so i will highlight when this tip or this piece of information is more for a newborn or for a toddler Okay, so the first thing is mainly for your newborns and infants and that's to invest in zip-up onesies. You know your play suits, normally they have buttons, right? Now a friend once told me that when she went travelling with her daughter, her daughter had an explosion poo. So this is one thing that really worried me and I wanted to be prepared for that situation. So if Gaisen did have an explosion poo, I was able to clean him up real quick. So I invested in zip up onesies because they're so much easier to get on and then zip up and you're done than to be faffing around in a really small uh, toilet cubicle trying to like do all the buttons. Uh, so yeah, zip up onesies. Um, I would also recommend that just before you board the plane, change your child into their like pyjamas. So get them, you know, put a fresh nappy on um, and then put the onesie on with the zip up because that will be easy to take off and then to replace with another one. I know places like um, H&M have them, Sainsbury's have them, Amazon has them. So have a look and yeah, that, that's just one little thing that will make life easier. Now let's talk about the next thing which is milk. Now at the time, Gleison was five months and I was nursing him but he would also get a bottle of formula every day. Now I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to breastfeed him and have the privacy that I desired um, so I thought I'd give him some ready-made Actimel, a ready-made formula and what I did is basically I purchased two cartons of milk um, and these were from Tesco, they were about 200ml and what I did is, okay two things so the first thing you need to do is pop them in a clear bag like this, okay? So when you get to uh, security, you can just hand it over and let them know that you've got it and they'll just quickly scan it and check it and give it back. The second thing I did was, um, leading up to our first holiday, when I was five months old, I got Gassim into um, the habit of being able to drink uh, room temperature milk. Now that's because I was really worried that I wouldn't be able to get one of the cabin crew's attention um, because I heard that you can ask them to heat the milk so I was worried about not being able to you know get that done 
and then the plane setting off and the milk wasn't ready and then guys are not accepting the cold milk um uh, well not cold room temperature but to him it'd be cold because he's not used to it and uh, so yeah so leading up to the flight i got guys and used to drinking room temperature milk so that meant all i had to do was tip the milk into his milk bottle and then when the plane actually lifted off that's when i started giving him his milk and that was to prevent any um, air being trapped in his ears and then causing him pain um, and it worked a treat. When I was on the plane I realised that actually I could nurse Qasim. Um, I was sat next to the window, yes I was sat next to me and then there was a guy sat next to him and I had my nursing cover which I will attach a or link a picture of it. So I had my nursing cover, I was at the window and I felt like I had enough privacy to be able to nurse my child without feeling uncomfortable so that wasn't an issue I still gave him his bottle of um, formula when the flight set off um, but then during the whole uh, duration of the flight I just nursed him now if you don't nurse your child but you don't want them having ready made formula and you prefer them just to stick to the powder stuff that they have then you can do that I would recommend um, getting a container which allows you to pour the right amount of um, formula so it's like a, it's i'll try and link it another picture of it but basically it's a part and it has three sections and you like you pour like your five scoops of formula in each section and then you have a lid where you can pour it straight into the bottle so it's already been measured out prevents you from having to carry that big tub of formula um, and then i would recommend you take a flask fill it up with hot water once you've checked in and things like that get some hot water from a cafe or ask the cabin crew to you know fill it up with um, hot water and then just top it up with cold water just to get the right temperature and then you should be good to go uh, so that's another alternative whatever you do just make sure your child has something to drink when the aeroplane is setting off because you want to get them to pop any you know air that's in their ears otherwise they will be in pain and they will be crying throughout the whole journey whenever you watch those horror videos online of babies crying throughout the whole journey and then disturbing other guests it's mainly because they've got trapped air in their ears and i've experienced that before and it's horrendous it is so painful so just make sure that your baby is drinking while the airplane is setting up i can't stress that enough for an older child i would recommend you just giving them some like water to drink or maybe they can have a lollipop or something to help them pop their ears. Now if your child has a dummy I would recommend you have that on standby just in case they don't want to drink anything because that will help release any air out of their ears. Um, so yeah dummies are a thumbs up in a situation like this. Now another thing to consider is um, booking the flight overnight. If your baby sleeps throughout the whole journey that's just going to make life so much easier for you. Um, now, Gazan was five months and we didn't have an overnight flight, however, he slept through most of it. Um, going to Egypt when he was five months, the whole journey was about five hours, he slept for three hours and a half. So, it, there was maybe an hour or half an hour beforehand where I had to entertain him and then an hour or half an hour after, which went really fast, it was nothing. When I took Gazan to Egypt when he was five months old, he couldn't get a bassinet because the journey wasn't long enough. Now what I did to make sure he was comfortable, because he was only five months and I didn't want to be holding him for six hours, five hours, whatever it was. Well, it was six hours on the way back. Um, I made sure I took my nursing pillow with me. Now this was a bit of a nightmare to carry around. In the airport we still had our pram, so we had it on the pram. But on the way out of the plane, carrying it was a bit annoying, but it was well worth it um, basically I would have it on my lap and then when Gasson fell asleep I just laid Gasson down on the nursing pillow and he was just so comfortable and I didn't have to worry so much about holding him up or holding him in my arms um, I was comfortable he was comfortable so yeah if your child is six months or younger consider taking a nursing pillow with you so um, in terms of entertainment when Gasson was five months he didn't really need a lot because he was just easily entertained by anything but I did take a small ring toy with me um, that doubled up as a teething toy um, and when Gasim was one year and a half I took things like um, sticky notes, 
Uh, sticky notes were really great for just sticking it around on the seats and they're easy to remove. I also took 3D stickers. Now I like 3D stickers because they're easy to take off whereas the flat stickers like sometimes they they stick and it's hard to remove them especially if you don't have nails. Um, so 3D stickers, sticky notes, some crayons. Now a lot of airlines do provide like children with a small goodie bag but there was nothing in there that I was really interested in so make sure you have your own stuff so along with the sticky notes the 3d stickers I also took some bubbles um, I took his favorite book and um, I took toy cars um, so yeah those things were enough to entertain him um, one thing to bear in mind is try and take toys that don't make noises like I was terrified about disturbing other passengers um, I just didn't want to be that person with the crying baby throughout the whole journey. Kaisen was an angel by the way, um, so really grateful for that. But still, I wanted to be prepared so we didn't have that situation. So I made sure Kaisen had toys, um, but they were quiet toys, you know, they didn't make any noises and things like that. Because if Kaisen was crying throughout the whole journey, I didn't want, on top of that, his toys to be making loads of noise and disturbing other passengers. Now when Kaisen was one year and a half when we were going to Umrah, um, I had to pack some snacks uh, just as a way of just entertaining him really. So I bought things like raisins, like a small box of raisins, mini cheddars, I had lollipops, I had like little mini biscuit, chocolate biscuits, things that he liked that would just occupy him for like five minutes. So yeah, for children who are a year old and um, onwards, consider taking a bag of snacks, different snacks just to keep him entertained or if they're not eating they've got something to snack on. Now another thing that you want to pack is some Kalpol. Now on the way back from Egypt when Kazan was five months, we were in the plane and he started developing a temperature. Now I made sure I had some Kalpol in my bag and this is 100 ml so it, you know, you can take it through um, onto aeroplanes, just make sure it's in a clear bag. Um, I gave him some Kalpol and it just meant that on the journey back he wasn't getting any worse, he was, you know, he was comfortable and he was able to rest and his temperature came back down. So Kalpal, because you just never know when things are going to flare up or, yeah. Now let's talk about nappies. So I remember when I did my research the first time around, someone gave a rule about having a nappy for every hour that you are on the plane. So we were on the plane for like five hours, so I was like five nappies is a lot. So I took three nappies. So just before we boarded the aeroplane, I made sure I got Gassim changed into a fresh nappy. Um, and then, yeah, I didn't need to change him until like maybe an hour before we um, landed. And even then, he didn't really need a nappy changing because he didn't do very much. He didn't have a poo or anything like that. So yeah, just before you board the plane, just make sure you change him into a fresh nappy. And instead of the rule of one nappy for each hour, um, I would recommend that you do one nappy for two for every two hours. So the next tip is for anyone that's already walking, and I would say get to the airport as early as you can and make sure you let your child run around before you board the plane. Let them run as much as you can because A, that will ensure that they will have a decent nap or sleep once they get into the aeroplane and two, they won't be so restless on the plane and you won't need to get up and walk them up and down. Now if you find that your child does become restless on the plane because it's quite a long journey, then I would just recommend yeah, walking them up and down. But if you try and get all the energy out beforehand, before you board the plane by getting them to run around, it's going to make life so much easier. Another thing to consider is where you're going to sit on the aeroplane. Now when we went to Egypt when Gaston was five months, we sat next to the window aisle. So uh, it was me, Yasser and then someone else. Uh, on the way to Umrah, we had the middle section, the aisle section, and we had a wall in front of us, so we had extra leg room, which was amazing because it meant that I could put Gassim down on the floor and he could stretch and just like crawl around a little bit. Um, but the only issue with that is that we didn't have our own TV screen. So Gassim wasn't able to watch anything. I was able to keep him entertained for most of it, but there were just some parts where he was just like, you know, maybe putting on something would have really helped. So just bear that in mind. Personally, I would pick the window aisle 
just because I will have made sure that Gaston would release all that energy before getting onto the plane and then on the plane he won't be really interested about running around because he's already done that then he'll have something to watch if he you know if he wanted to watch something now you will notice that your bag is going to be pretty full especially with all the snacks and the toys you're going to have a lot so whenever you can take anything that's travel size i recommend that you do uh, so for example the nappy cream get a travel size nappy cream sometimes you can get um travel size wipes consider getting your travel size wipes talking about wipes get yourself some sanitizing wipes because you'll want to wipe down the surface now this is what i did before even the whole coronavirus but now with the coronavirus this is something you really need to do and just make sure you do it thoroughly when you go into the toilet make sure you give everything like a wipe and um, in the toilet by the way you do have like a a board that you can push down and lay your child on top now for some reason i did i couldn't find the board and um, so i just sat down on the toilet uh with my lap flat and i just laid fast on my lap and quickly changed him and that was absolutely fine and um, actually i preferred that just because i knew my lap was a lot cleaner than the board but yeah if you have sanitizer wipe it should be fine you'll be able to clean it and it should be um, just as good as your lap. Right, so I did mention in your bag you're gonna have like spare clothes. Make sure you also get a spare top for yourself just in case it's an accident and you need to change your top and freshen up. Um, so I would just recommend like a baggy t-shirt. That's thin that can fold up but won't take so much space in your bag. Final thing that I want to talk about is a baby carrier. Now when you check into the airport they will let you keep your pram all the way to the point where you're boarding your plane and then they will take the pram. Now when you land at your destination and you're getting off the aeroplane, you won't get your pram back right away. You have to collect it where you normally collect your luggage. So sometimes that can be quite a trek. And if you're holding the baby and you're holding, you've got a backpack and things like that, that could be quite a difficult task. Especially after being sat in the aeroplane for several hours, you know, you'll be tired as well. So I strongly recommend that you invest in a baby carrier. Now when Gaston was five months, I had the, you know those long material baby carriers? I had that one just because it was just so much more comfortable for Gaston. And at that stage, I was really confident with putting it on. Um, so I would just wrap it around me as we were getting ready to get off, slot the Gaston in, and then he was just comfortable and I was hands free, which was amazing. When Gaston was one year and a half, I needed something a bit more sturdier because he was a bit uh, bigger. So I had uh, this Ergo baby baby carrier and yeah this was amazing because guys felt secure in this uh, it was easy to put on so basically I put it on like this and yeah clip it in let me see if I can demonstrate oh it's been a while since I've worn this right so you put it on like that so it's clipped on at the back and then you get this bit which is already clipped and these are great because you can wash them and then yeah so you clip it on from the back and then you just slot gas in and you slot your child now i bought this one because it had like a mesh and now when we went to umra it was really really hot so it just allowed some air to get through to gas in so this meant as well that i was hands-free when i got off the plane and Gassim was really comfortable and I didn't just use that for that purpose when we went to Amra and we were walking around Gassim, I held Gassim in this while I, I actually completed my Amra and when we went to Egypt I also made use of the baby carrier um, and just held Gassim in the baby carrier you know and I was able to be hands free without having to take the pram everywhere with me so baby carriers are amazing for getting off the plane when you don't have your pram so I think that's all for today. I hope you guys, I'm just going to take this off. So guys, that's all for today. I hope that if you are traveling soon, this video just reassures you uh, and yeah, makes you feel a bit more prepared and you know what to do in order to feel prepared. Um, if you have any questions for me, leave them down below and I will get back to you. Don't be worried. Everything will be fine. Don't worry about the other passengers. I worried a lot about the other passengers and how I would have disturbed them, but it's not the case at all. A lot of the passengers are either mothers, fathers, aunties, um, you know, 
cousins of younger children so they will know they will know and understand your situation generally like 95 percent people are really really lovely and they want to help um, and the cabin crew are really lovely um, so don't worry so much about disturbing other people um, so yeah I think that's all for today I hope I've covered most things thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon bye